Hello guys, welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be tackling this awesome integral. It's inspired by Matt's 505 video on a very similar integral, which I'll link right here. Uh, and I'll also put it in the description because we'll be referencing it a few times. We're going to solve it using this box contour, which is the same contour that uh, Matt's 505 used to evaluate a very similar integral. So, so without any further ado, let's jump into it. Now first I want to list out all the identities that I'm going to be using in this video. The first thing I want to note is that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of cosine x over cosh x, this was shown by maths 505 dx, equals pi uh, hyperbolic secant of pi over 2. Next, we're going to be using the angle addition formulas for sine. So sine of x plus y equals sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. This is just using the uh, imaginary definition of sine of x. It's pretty easy to prove. Similarly, sine h x plus y, it's the same exact thing, except everything is hyperbolic. And finally, we're going to be using, again, something that can be derived using the imaginary formula, relatively simple to see, is that cosh of i t, or I guess i x, doesn't really matter what you put here, cosine, cosh of i x equals cosine x, cosine of i x equals cosh of x, sine h of i x equals i sine of x, and sine of i x equals i sine h x. All right, so that's all we'll be using. Uh, so without any further ado, let's jump into the integral. So to, d to figure out what kind of contour we're using here, first we need to look at the poles. Now, this is going to be when sine h x equals 0. And of course, the elementary pole here is x equals 0. But if you look at the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over sine h x, you'll find that that just equals uh, 1, not 0. You can do that using power series, the Hoppedal's rule, or just the exponential definitions, but that's going to just be equal to 1. So that's not really a pole. We can solve for other, other points where sine hx is 0, but we're actually going to just avoid those altogether. So I'll just go ahead and tell you that uh, sine hx is 0 at x equals i pi k, where k is some integer. So that's like here, 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 right? All the way up and down to infinity. But we're just going to be avoiding all of those residues because we'll actually just use Cauchy's, res Cauchy's residue theorem and say that our integral goes to zero. So we're going to be using a box contour. And the reason for that is because we can capture, first off, the real axis, right? That's what we need. And then we want to create a closed loop. So as sine h uh, goes to infinity, it, qui uh, it quickly, as, as x goes to infinity, sine h of x also quickly goes to infinity. And so that means that when we have something that's way out here, we can just quickly go up a little bit, and it'll basically be zero for that entire uh, length of the integrand. Then we're going to go all the way back, and then we're going to go back down. So these two, uh, and I should say the height of this line right here, is uh, such that the imaginary part of our complex variable equals pi over 2. So we're going to go from negative infinity to infinity, we're going to go up pi over 2, and then we're going to go back, and then we're going to go back down. So first off, the first thing we have to do is show that these uh, outer integrals go to 0. So if we let z equal r plus i y, uh, then dz equals i dy, right? And so we're going to end up with the integral from y equals 0 to y equals pi over 2 of sine of, sine of z, which is sine of r plus i y, over sine h of r plus i y. I'll just bring the i from the i dy to the outside, and we'll have a dy right here. And then using our expansion formulas that we had before, this pretty easily turns into uh, 
And so, as you can see here, we have this nice expansion. Now, the first thing I want to say is, um, as y varies a lot from 0 to pi over 2, cosine, x, cosine y will start at 0, and then it'll, or will start at 1, and then it'll slowly go to 0, and sine y will start at 0, and it'll slowly go to 1. So if we look at the bottom here, sine h of r is, and cosh of r are constant, and they're both uh, equal to a very large infinity, right, because we have that exponential on the inside of sine h and cosh. So uh, this bottom is pretty much going to be infinity for the entire entirety of the integrand. Now the only part where they won't exactly be infinity is of course, as I said, at pi over 2, this will be 0, so this whole bit will be 0, but at pi over 2, this will be 1, and so this will still be uh, infinity, right? Similarly, at y equals 0, this right term will all be equal to 0, but this will still be infinity. And since this one is imaginary and this one is real, we, can't, we don't have to worry about any situation in the middle where they'll kind of like cancel each other, and this bottom will not be infinity. So since the bottom is infinity for the entirety of the integrand and everything up here is just a positive non-infinity real number, this entire integrand is zero, and that means that the uh, entire portion of the integral we're looking at this portion right now just goes all the way to zero. And we can do the exact same thing for the other portion of the integral. If we just go ahead and put a negative r right here, negative r, negative r, and then instead of going from 0 to pi over 2, we're going to pi over 2 to 0. And so we can just put a negative sign right here, right? And so all that's going to change right here is a negative sign here, a negative sign here, and that's the only difference. And so it's still going to go straight to 0. So both of those outer parts of our integral are going to go to 0. So now let's look at the other parts of our integral. This red part is our real axis part, and this is just the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine of x over sine h x dx, which is equal to i, we'll say. We also have this blue part, which if we make a quick substitution, z equals i pi over 2 uh, plus u, then dz equals du. And this upper integral, or I'll just, you know, I don't know how to signify it, just like blue, is going to be the integral from u equals infinity to u equals negative infinity of sine of u plus i pi over 2, sine h of u plus i pi over 2, du. And so we'll go ahead and flip this integration right here and put a negative sign in front. And then we'll just go ahead and expand it. So if we go ahead and look at the bottom, cosine of pi over two is zero. So this is just gonna disappear. And sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so that's going to disappear as well. And on the bottom, we just have i cosh of u. If we look at this term right here, you'll notice that sine is an odd function, while cosh uh, is an even function. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine u over cosh u is just going to be 0. So this whole term is also going to disappear, and cosh of pi over 2 is just a constant multiplier. So we're going to end up with this, and if we go ahead and cancel the i's, we're going to end up with the integral that mass 505 evaluated, which is just, at, of course, times negative sine h pi over 2. So this is going to be, uh, as I said, it's pi, pi uh, set of pi over 2, right? And times sine h pi over 2, this is just going to become hyperbolic tangent of pi over 2. Right? All right. And so now we're ready to do our, to uh, solve our integral. So as we said in the beginning, we have uh, the integral of f of z dz is equal to zero. And that's just equal to i plus this other integral right here, which is uh, negative pi tan 
h of pi over 2. And so, just rearranging, we get that i is equal to pi 10h of pi over 2. That's our answer. All right, I hope you enjoyed this awesome contour with the box and this video and this cool integral, and I'll see you next time.